Did the cat keep its leg? Yes. yes. Oh, because oh, I was holding goodness. my breath then. Thank you very much for having me on the show again. But yeah. that, that clip right there shows the whole crux of everything that I do because within that conversation is a very important welfare and ethical issue because I asked the lady... Yeah. Why didn't she consider full limb amputation? As it turned out, the cat wouldn't manage too well on three legs for various other reasons. Yeah. And, and that's the important thing. You, yeah. almost, you always do something because it's in the animal's best interest. Which, and that's, that's what makes that's you what a, a special and a skillful, uh, skillful uh, person. Uh, the story begins in Ballyfin in Ireland. And I, I very much enjoyed the serialisation that, that was uh, of the hardback in, in newspapers. The paperback is out now. What if you're not into animals? What if you don't share the sort of vision that you have? Why would you want to p pick up this book and uh, hear about Noel Fitzpatrick becoming the super vet? Well, that's a very wonderful thing for me about the paperback coming out because when I wrote it, you know, late at night on Saturdays or on a Sunday when I had a few hours, I wanted it not to be an autobiography, even though it is, it tracks my life, mm. but I wanted it to be a universal biography for any child who feels like a misfit, any child who feels that they don't belong, any person that they, don't, that they feel life is kind of stacked up against me and this isn't going to happen, but I have this big dream. And for me, I recognised that my currency was unconditional love. And I recognised that the love I see between a dog and a human being, you even said to Ruth earlier, if I was a dog, you'd mm. love... It. And <laughs> that is the thing. It's an unconditional kind of love and responsibility. So I wanted this book to be about the universal search for kindness, meaning, compassion, dreams. Anyone who ever wished on a star, as I did on a, a frozen field in Ireland... Well, uh, you got that unconditional should love read from your, your first dog, Pirate. Yes. Because you were said you felt a bit of a misfit at school, you didn't have many friends, and it was that dog who showed you that unconditional love. This is where it's all started. Yeah, very much so. And there's lots of people out there, they may be six or they may be 60, yeah. and they may be going through life's crises. And even your makeup lady, when I came on this show, was telling me the epiphany she had this week when she delivered puppies. Mm -hmm. And she said, you take everything for granted until you see life or death happening and the stuff in between kind of gets homogenized but this book is about searching for meaning in all of that and for me when I was a child and I was being bullied at school uh, I had a dog called Pirate well he was a farm dog and I would sit with him in the shed and discuss my problems and people nowadays have so many problems in school and, and in society generally we live at a very superficial yeah. level with social media and stuff but when you spend time with your dog you're in the moment yes. yeah. and people who have dogs often like to spend time with other people who have dogs which led you to create this amazing thing called Dog Fest, which continues again this year, and there will be uh, fests in May and June, and they'll be in Hertfordshire, in Bristol, and Chester? In I'm Cheshire. Right. Cheshire. Yeah. Um, um, tell us what happens at Dog Fest. So we have a field in Bristol, a field in, in Cheshire, a field in Hertfordshire, that in my opinion is full of good human beings. And where can you be in the world where you're pretty sure everybody's a good person and everybody in that field loves dogs. And even if you don't love dogs and you like people who are kind and generous, yes. Come to Dog Fest and, and what's that for the dogs? What happens is that the dogs jump in big pools, they go on long dog walks, they play with all kinds of obstacle courses. There's a most lucky likey competition. Is that the there's... dogs <laughs> to sniff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's dogs but running. Is it, is it not just madness? Because mostly what dogs do is sniff other dogs' bottoms. <laughs> yes. So I mean, basically, do they actually pay attention to anything else that's going along, or do they just after the next bottom? Well, what's extraordinary along? is how well they get on. Whether whether it's a Jack Russell Terrier or a Newfoundland. And everybody in the field, we go on a great dog walk for two or four kilometres and there could be thousands of people on this dog I walk. Mean, they're all chatting about yeah. life, you yeah. know, what journeys they've been through with their dogs. And then they go back to the field and they just see loads of dog things to play with and dogs jumping over bales of straw. Well, let me dogs tell people have when, when that is. 11th, 12th of May, Nebworth House, Hertfordshire, 11th, 12th of May, 15th, 16th of June, Tatton Park in Cheshire. 22nd, 23rd of June, Ashton Court in Bristol. And uh, to get tickets for that, where do people go? What do they do? They can go online to Dogfest in www.dogfest and whatever the end of that is. And uh, they, I don't know what the end of that is, but they can go online and get tickets. Um, no. But it's a delight to be here. Thank you so much. And, Always a pleasure. Uh, people want Always to see me, they pleasure. can come to Dogfest. Dogfest. And we'll sign yeah, so and also don't forget well. Supervet, the series, no series, Channel 4.